I'm Dr. Lori. I'm at the Goodwill in Glastonbury, Connecticut. Come on and thrift with me. Let's see what we got here. See, new inventory. Here we go. Made in Portugal, right? So I've showed it to you before. Look inside. See if you can see, of course, the banding. See if it's glazed inside. Portuguese ceramics, very desirable. They look good. They're functional. So for sangria, right, or for um, a punch or something like that, heavily painted and decorated. It doesn't look like it's ever been used. I mean, this looks like new, and there's a lot of new things that actually come out. So what do they want for it? They want five. It's big. It's significant. They want five. I would say value on this 40. So that's a nice piece. It's newer, though. It dates into the early 21st century, so the early 2000s. I'm not going to put that up high because I think it's going to get damaged. I'm going to put that over here. And then this one, the other thing I don't want you to miss, you should be able to recognize It's unfortunate. See, you don't think, oh, it needs a lid, but you see the decoration around here, that silver decoration means that it did not have a lid. Two handles means that this is a sugar bowl, and it never had a lid because you have the decoration there, which completes the piece. This is Homer Laughlin, American, American sugar bowl. Now, it's damaged, and you're saying, well, it looks like it's not chipped or cracked. The damage is in the discoloration in the bottom. So you see the bottom of this base, and you're seeing discoloration at the bottom of the base. So that's damage. Um, what do they want for this? They want a dollar. A dollar is good. What is it worth? It's worth about four. Here's some Homer Laughlin pieces. Uh, looks like some of them are the same uh, type. Here's more Homer Laughlin. So American pottery, everybody had this. This is sort of the everyday china that everybody had in the 1950s. Um, that particular set. Eh, it's in okay shape, not great shape. It's been used, you can see it. So I'd probably pass that by unless you get a really good deal. Um, and a dollar a piece is not a great deal. But maybe you can get it on coupon day. I don't know, I don't know you know, senior day or coupon day, something like that. Uh, what else do we have? Well, straight out and out in the open, Limoges, St. Martin's. St. Martin's, Limoges, for a buck. So it's new, but it's nice. Unfortunately, they put the label right on top of the decoration. But this, these are nice. These are dessert plates, and there's four of them. And they look like they're in nice condition. One, two. So three of them, I think, are the same. And then the fourth one is different. Right? Have I got that right? Yeah. All right, they're a dollar a piece. They're worth, they're worth 12 a piece for St. Martin plates like these the resale market, so these are really pretty good. I like the blue, I don't think they're anything special. When you pick them up, you can tell these are not anything special. Right here, you've got some nice hand-painted saucers. That one is Bavarian, you can see that one. Uh, early 20th century designs. I'm gonna keep digging, there's a blue-white. Ah, I like the blue-white, look at that, that's nice. That's a nice piece, look at that. So you've got this one, which is obviously Staffordshire, England, because of the transfer wear. But look at the decoration. I like that decoration. So that would be a nice piece for on the china cabinet, in the china cabinet or such, in good shape. And the windmills, sailboats. Yeah, here we go. So semi-vitreous. So that's um, an English pottery piece. I like that. For a dollar, you can get six out of that. So six times what you're paying for that. I like that blue-white. And how about these? The decoration, the pattern, you should look at it and say, oh, yeah, these nice delicate flowers and some gold banding and then some embossed decoration. You should say, oh, I know that that's going to be an early piece of china. These are German trying to look like Limoges, but they're pretty nice. And if you like the green, it's good. I see some more pieces. How much? A dollar. No, it's all a dollar. So for a dollar, you can really make a nice decoration for your home or you could flip them. So value on these Bavari these German pieces. So for a dollar, you're going to probably get about seven dollars each out of those. Those are nice too. But you got to sell them in an environment where the market will bear that. You know, this is fine bargains on the road. This isn't, oh, well, you're going to resell them to these people and they're going to pay you that much. You have to know where the market is. That's what I try to teach you. So then we've got this one, another Bavarian dish. I'll show you the mark first, then I'll show you the dish. Expect hand painting and gilding, and a lot of it. So 
This is early 20th century Bavarian. And these are the kinds of marks you look for. And if you don't want to look for marks, look for the bright white clay. <laughs> look for the ceramic. Look for the nice quality, right? And people uh, will recognize a piece like that. So that's lovely flowers. You could just have that sitting. Um, so this is transferware, and this is, of course, gilded. And people will say of, of all this china, oh, you know, young people don't want any of this. All I'm seeing, I'm looking at them now, are young people who have carts full of china like this and glassware that all of you think nobody wants. And what are they doing? They're purchasing it here for themselves, for their collections. You know, I'm telling you, it's out there, and the market's there, too. Uh, value on this piece, $15 for a $1 investment. And then I would not pass by these, which are also hand-painted, but a little different. So while well, that one was Bavarian, look at these hand-painted pieces. So old, and you can see the age on it, right? You can see some of the losses of the gold leaf, that's the details of it. But all the hand-painted work is right here and really well done. Done by a studio artist, not done by an amateur artist. How do you tell the difference? The studio artists are quicker, so you can see the brush stroke is quicker. That's a studio artist versus an amateur artist. The amateur artist very, very slow. You know, great grandma wanted to paint these for herself, taking more time, so you can see that. Here's your mark on the back, which is really a tremendous, beautiful mark with the star. And this piece, of course, in the manner of French Limoges, early 20th century, so early 1900s for it. They want a dollar for each dish. And I know it's easy for it to be marked at a dollar. And a lot of you are saying, oh, everything's going so high and these thrift stores are so expensive now. A dollar for this $20 dish is not expensive. You know, a dollar is a bargain is what it is for this. And there's not one, there's two. And when there's two, even if you only need one, buy the second one, you'll be happy you did. So those are $20 a piece for a $1 investment. This one has similar painting on it. So that one has nice hand paint work too. And you can see it. You can see how quick it was. Look at where the, this is where the paintbrush touched, where the green, where the dark green is, is where the paintbrush touched the actual ceramic. And then it moved. And the movement is the lighter portion. That's done really quickly because they got to paint a lot of them. So they're painting them pretty quickly. So all you people think that you can't find a bargain. There are no bargains here. What just transpired before I got to this table is a person looked at this table, took some pictures, tried to get it on Google, Google Images, looked it up, saw, oh, gee, doesn't think it's worth anything, and walked by it. OK, it's $12. They want $12 for this 1980s. This is, of course, frosted brass metal table with the beveled edge. You can tell it's the 80s because it's the double beveled edge glass. This coffee table is worth $300 in this condition. And all day, every day, they're selling them on many of the platforms that I talk about here on the channel. So this person looked it up. Now, maybe he looked it up and said, oh, he couldn't. But he said, oh, it's not worth it. And maybe it wasn't worth it to him because he has to resell it. He doesn't want to ship it. I don't know what the problem was. But basically, you just missed a great bargain. There it is. Don't think the stuff is not worth anything here. I also see a lot of pieces that are, while they might be solid wood, you know, a lot of pieces that DIYers are basically damaging because now this is a piece of oak, okay, so solid wood, but this is not a great piece, right? This is an old dry sink, so this is a style from the 1970s that was popular. It's damaged. You can see that you've got damage here. But a DIYer could make something out of this. You've got to sand the whole thing down and do all the work and repaint it and such. But basically, that's what we're looking at for, for this. This piece is a piece that was made by Bassett Furniture. It's got a Bassett mark right in it. Um, so the interior is particle board, you know, pressed wood. But the rest of it has um, a very typical 1970s look. Uh, what do they want for this? Yeah, crack me up. They want $15 for this, but they only want $12 for the table. <laughs> so this, this piece, and it doesn't look like the door closes. This piece you could DIY, and it's going to need a little bit of TLC. So I would work on that piece, but for $15, it's not worth more than this piece. It's probably only worth about $25. Bucks. But for, to a DIYer, they can make something out of it. Um, you know, this is called a gallery in the back. This back portion is called a gallery. A lot of people don't know what that's called. And that's so things don't slide off of it. You know, if I were a DIYer and a creative type, I'd make this into a coffee stand. You could have your little coffee, your little coffee uh, here. 
uh, during the day. I'd probably take this this off. I'd putty up these holes and get rid of that door that doesn't work. I'd fill the holes where the hardware was with putty, and I'd probably make just cute little shelves in there. Nice, but not not worth what the table here is worth. So when it comes to these pieces, when it comes to furniture, you've got to think about what can I do with it? Where can it work? And I know my driver for my sand wedge too. If you see golf clubs, you might want to take a second look at them. They can be very valuable. If there's no golf clubs, try to get the golf bag because they're expensive too. Well, this one's sold. Now the question is, what did it sell for? Let's see, it's up here. It looks like it's up here. 18. $18 for that. That is great. So solid hardwood. It's got its original hardware, panel doors, original knobs, storage drawers down the bottom. Well, typical from the 1980s, but wow. I mean, even in that condition, that's a $275 piece. That's beautiful for 18 bucks. Well, there are bargains here. There are bargains here. Somebody knew it. They bought it. This piece sold and it sold for $12. And it is wood, but it's in such bad condition. Um, you can see that this drawer with the original handles does open. This basically opens up so you can write on it like a secretary desk. But somebody with some skills can actually make something out of it. But in this condition, it's junk. If you're gonna put some time and energy and effort into it, then you can make some money off of it. My cart's empty because I left the treasures there for you.